This video is about my adventure in learning solid modeling using Fusion 360. This is not a tutorial. This is just for if you've ever seen like 3D models and you've wondered, where do they come from? How are they made? Um, and this will just kind of give you a taste of that because I figured some of you guys might want to follow along and be like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to put a link in the video description to the guy whose channel I've been watching. His name is Lars. He is a Fusion 360 master, and his tutorials are amazing. And if you want to learn how to do solid modeling, I highly recommend him. All right, there's one more thing I want to tell you. So bear with me for a story real quick. You know the board game Clue, or I think in Europe it's called Cluedo? Basically, you go around, you're trying to like use logic to solve a murder mystery. And there's these sheets of paper you get that have all the possible cards on them. And you ask questions and you mark the sheet of paper to kind of like eliminate and figure out. Okay, so there's, a, there's kind of strategies for how to do that. And anybody who's played Clue knows like how to, you know, how to do it. It's not just a guessing game is my point. You don't just like guess, oh, maybe so-and-so did it. You use process of elimination and logic. So one day, Clue is like Clue is like my wife's favorite game. And one day, she read this thread on the internet where this guy was explaining in great detail this amazing system he'd come up with for marking down the answers to the questions and using that information to figure out who the murderer was. And everybody was like, that's not a strategy for playing the game. That's just how you play the game. You haven't like figured something out. That's just that's just how you do it. Be like if I said, listen, guys, when we go play baseball, what what about this crazy idea? How about we hit the ball? And then when the ball goes flying, we run around the bases. Ha <laughs> ha, strategy. So my point is that. I'm going to show you guys my very my, these early and I hadn't got like literally the day after I finished shooting this content I was like oh and I learned a new thing. I learned that you can use these parameters right here to change like all the aspects of your of your model just like parametrically that's why they call it par parametric modeling. You can just have all these parameters and you can type them in and change things dynamically, you know, and I hadn't figured that out yet when I did this very first modeling thing, which is like, that's not like a new trick I picked up. That's just how you do it. Nevertheless, I'm going to let you follow along at my very first attempts at modeling an object and I hope you enjoy it and I hope it inspires you. It doesn't teach you. You're not going to learn anything today, but I hope it inspires you if you are into 3D printing and if you've always wanted to kind of get into 3D modeling to kind of get a taste of how that works and maybe to start. Go watch Lars's tutorials. They're amazing. Off we go. We're going to make a box with holes in it. What does that even mean? Well, this here is a automotive light bulb that you can use as a smoke stopper. These are super, super useful. If you don't know what a smoke stopper is, link in the video description to my video about smoke stoppers. Now, normally, oh, here's one here. Normally, my smoke stoppers just look like this. They plug into the battery and uh, they do their thing. But I want to put them in a socket. This is just a a socket so you can plug and unplug it easily and i've also got two of them because on 6s the voltage is too high automotive bulbs are rated for 12 volts they can handle up to 4s but on 5 or 6s they'll pop so two of them in series will fix that and i've got these cool little buttons and the purpose of these is to be able to cut the power to the quad like if you're on the bench and you need to just like cut the power or if you're trying to bind you can eat you don't have to plug the battery in and then i'm thinking the box is going to be laid out with the two light bulbs on top and the two switches on bottom and so it's kind of just basically going to be a square this is 43 millimeters 32 millimeters 50 so let's just say that the box is going to be 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters square and that should give us enough space to hold all these things. Maybe that's bigger than we need. I don't know. We'll see. Here in Fusion 360, 
first thing I got to do is make some new components. And the components for this uh, are going to be the box and they are going to be the lid. So the next thing I need to do is sketch the bottom of the box on this uh, bottom plane. And I'm going to do that by pressing the S key, the S key, and I'm going to draw a center rectangle on the bottom plane. I'm going to click where the center of the rectangle is going to be, and I can just type the dimensions 100, tab key 100, and we are going to, we can extrude that sort of up into space, and we need to know the height of the box. So this switch is sort of the deepest thing that we've got to deal with, so that's going to define the height. 48 millimeters is what it says. So let's just say 55 millimeters, just for funsies. So you just type 55 millimeters, and there we go. So now we got a solid cube. How do we turn it into a box? Yeah, the way that we do that is we're going to click on this top surface. We are going to press S, and we are going to use the offset. And we're going to offset the sides inward. And I think uh, we're going to go for minus 3 millimeters. And that's going to create another square inside this square at 3 millimeters distance, uh, which gives us a 3 millimeter wall uh, thickness. Is that a good wall thickness, people who have designed objects? I just eyeballed what 3 millimeters looked like, and I thought, oh, that seems about how thick the wall should be. Leave your advice down in the comments. I would love to hear advice on like how to set the wall thickness for functionality and so forth. So then what we're going to do is we're going to press Q to push-pull. We're going to click on this face. And we're going to just sort of drag that down into the box to sort of hollow out the box. To object, and this is going to be all the way down to the bottom surface. So right now, we've just made a hole all the way through the box, which isn't what we want. We want to go all the way down to the bottom, but then offset minus 4 millimeters. Let's make the bottom, should we make the bottom 4 millimeters? Like to give the box some additional rigidity or should it be 3 millimeters like the wall? I don't know. Let's make it 3 millimeters. Minus 3 millimeters. Oh, look at that. We got a box. Isn't that cute? Now the next thing I think we want to do is make a lid for the box. Okay, we're going to offset by minus 80 millimeters. Oh, perfect. Now the lid of the box is just up floating over the top of the box. Super cool. So the next thing I guess I got to do is I got to make a hole for this uh, button. So it looks like that's 29 millimeters. And I guess we're going to want to give a little bit of relief. We don't want to make the hole exactly 29 millimeters or it won't go in. But I don't know. How much, how much clearance am I supposed to give? I don't know. But anyway, we're in construction mode and we're going to draw one, two, three, four lines. And now these lines will each have a midpoint. There we go. That little triangle there means the midpoint. These lines will now have a midpoint. And now S two point circle. And I can make a two point circle. Boom. Exactly centered in that quadrant. Press C for center circle. We're going to start the circle here. And it's going to be 29.5 millimeters. And then we just want to like make the hole go through the damn thing. So I'm going to select that and hit Q for push pull. And then I'm going to pull it extent to object. And I'm going to take it all the way through to the back face. And that's it. Now we got a hole through there. So then I'm going to click this and click this and Q. And then we'll go to extent to object. We'll pick the back face, we'll come through, and OK. Boom! And we got our holes for our buttons. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes! Now let's do the holes for this guy. And this is going to be a little more complicated because we have to, like, cut out this bit for this to slide into and then rotate around and sort of lock into place. And if we make that too big, it's going to be loose and fall out. So 32.12, let's make it 32.25 millimeters. And in construction mode, we're just going to mark a circle of diameter 32.25, OK? We need an arc that is 15 millimeters long along the straight. We'll go to the line tool. We'll come out to here where it intersects. We want another line. And we're going to stay intersecting. 
and we're going to keep extending that line until it gets to 15 millimeters. But we're going to be intersecting this circle. And that's going to give us an arc of exactly, see, if I just set it to 15, the problem is if I just set it to 15 millimeters, will it, will it lock on? <gasps> it will. Oh my God, that's so good. Okay, so now we've got this 15 millimeter. So now that's where the arc needs to end. So then we're going to exit construction mode. We're going to do a center point arc from the center to here and then around to this intersection point and that is going to be the outside of our little thing and then all we need to do is make a line from here to here and from here to there <gasps> yes 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 now the next thing i need to do is i need to flip this I bet this is a really inefficient way to do it. But what I'm going to do is, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the mirror tool. And then I'm going to select these objects. Right? Is that what I want? Not that one. Yeah. This object. And I'm going to mirror that across this line. And then again, I'm going to mirror this, this, and this across this line. Yes. And then I'm going to hit delete. Nope. I'm going to delete this, this. That doesn't need to be there. That doesn't need to be there. That doesn't. OK. <gasps> yes. So now. We're going to choose rectangular pattern. We're going to select all of these objects. And then we're going to do a rectangular pattern in this direction. Two objects, 50 millimeters. No, minus 50 millimeters. Damn it. OK, perfect. Boom, 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 boom. Shift click, shift click, click, shift click. And Q to extrude or push pull, push pull to object to the back face, makes a hole through, and OK, and a view the top, and yes, yes, we've done it. Now, the next thing we need to do is we're going to make a hole for the XT60, and there's a whole bunch of other things we could do, but. I think that's enough of this video. I hope you've really enjoyed this. Um, I was so stoked to see what all was involved in modeling. I just thought you just like draw lines and make objects, but this is so much smarter and cooler than that. And if you've wondered like, how is how are 3D objects made? Well, probably not anything like this because I'm a total noob, but I hope you enjoyed watching this anyway. And if you are looking to get into this kind of stuff, Fusion 360, the software I'm using, is totally free for personal use, at least for a year, maybe longer. So if you think this would be a cool thing for you to get into, there is so much more here. But just just find some tutorials online and uh, start doing it. It's so freaking cool. And I can't wait to print this and actually see something I modeled get made in real life. So freaking cool. That's going to do it for this video, though. I'm going to leave you here. I got a lot more work to do on this, but I think you get the gist. If you have any tips, I would love to get tips on better th on ways I could be doing this better and smarter. Um, there you go. Happy flying, everybody.